Recently, there has been a bit of drama, to say the least, regarding online musicians, particularly non-U.S. online musicians, and a particular distributor that is very popular in this space, DistroKid. And there has been several tweets and articles and, and Reddit posts and even, you know, some YouTube videos about this. In particular, there is one from May 21st from Dan Vask entitled, I was robbed. DistroKid steals money from musicians. So you can see that, you know, this is definitely something that has a lot of people very heated up and um, very excited. And so I wanted to kind of talk about this because in Dan Vask's video in particular, he takes a line from DistroKid's communications to him, ask an accountant, and he kind of makes it into a bit of a running joke. He's very convinced that DistroKid has stolen his money and that all they just need to do is give it back and that that's it. But I wanted to kind of talk about why you, if, especially if you're a uh, musician, whether you're U.S. or non-U.S., probably should be talking to an accountant and especially a tax accountant who can help you out with things like this. If DistroKid is doing what they're saying they're doing, then they probably can't refund Dan's money because they don't have it. It's to the U.S. government. I'm going to start this with a disclaimer this is going to be for general principles. And at several points in this video, I'm going to say there are open questions that depends on facts and circumstances about how these would play out in any particular person's situation. And this place is not to give that answer of, you know, is it X or Y? It's just to say, these are the sorts of things that if you talked with your tax accountant, they should be able to answer. And if they can't, then maybe you should consider another tax accountant who, who has that expertise. Okay, so in Dan Vaz's video, he goes over the idea pretty well. DistroKid apparently recently, although I'm getting some conflicting views on this since I found some Reddit threads that are older, they've recently started taking 30% withholding on for tax purposes from musicians from outside the U.S. This has caused, how shall we say it, uh, a bit of consternation because DistroKid has traditionally advertised themselves as being the distributor that gives you 100% of your earnings and doesn't take out any cut. And so that's why you should go with them. And so for them to say that, but then also secretly take, you know, 30% or it, it looks like if people don't agree to that, then, then they, they can't get any of their money out anymore. So I started looking into this. This is not, this is not my personal area of tax. I do not work on international taxes and I also do not work on personal. I do not work on individual income taxes, uh, but it was, it, you know, as an online musician and as a just a nerd, I wanted to kind of you know see you know what are the sorts of concerns here. As I was doing my research, I found some areas where I said, okay, I kind of understand the, the principle here, but for specific answers, I would need to talk to a colleague or someone else who has that particular experience in the international context or you know specific to particular countries to kind of have specific answers. What I want to do in this video is I want to kind of explain these general principles can't go into anyone's specific fact patterns. I want to hopefully elucidate why when people say, ask an accountant, talk to your accountant, work with your accountant, they're not just saying that just because. They're saying that because taxes are complicated. Accounting is complicated. And you definitely want to have someone in your court who knows your facts and who knows the particularities of how the various laws interact with your facts. I'm going to try to explain this with simple terms in a kind of more of a comedic sense, just so that you guys get the gist. In general, governments want money and they get that money by taxes. In general, these governments want as much money as they possibly can get. And the U.S. government is no different. The IRS wants money. So the IRS would say that anyone who has U.S. source income probably should be paying taxes to the IRS for that. That includes non-U.S. people, people who are not living in the U.S., not U.S. citizens, they would maybe consider that they don't really have any connection to the U.S. The IRS call those non-resident aliens. Can a non-resident alien have U.S. source income, in which case the IRS would want its cut of that? If you went to the IRS website of source of income, you will see that there are different factors determining the source of income based off of what type of income it is. So, you know, if it's uh, personal services or salaries, wages, and compensation, so where the services are performed, and we might say, okay, well, you know, if I've never lived in the United States and I've never gone to the United States, then I should be good here because I am not performing my services in the United States. But as we go down, there's other types of things such as, you know, interest is the residence of the payer. So who is the payer in this case, right? We wouldn't necessarily look at the recipient. We might look at the residence of the payer. 
So if you're getting paid in, you know, interest from someone who's in the U.S., then you might have to start asking that question. Where it's really interesting is this line item for royalties from patents and copyrights. And that says where the property is used. And so one question that you might want to ask an accountant about is, if you're a musician who's creating music, you should be aware that your music generates copyrights. There's copyrights in the sound recording. There's copyrights in the composition if you're also the composer. And so the question is, where is the copyright being used when you sell or when you license or when you distribute or when you stream your music to an international audience? And to me, it seems plausible, but again, ask an accountant that if you are selling your music and you have an audience that includes U.S. people, then you probably have to at least ask the question about whether that raises U.S. source income. Again, for your specific situation, you'd want to ask an accountant. Uh, I mean, this is, we're, I, I was, I'm just going to point, point this out. Like this, this is going to be something that I'm going to say a lot in this video because I want people to take it seriously. I don't want people to kind of write off that advice. Then the question becomes, if you have U.S. sourced income, then the IRS may want their share of it. What other considerations might there be with that? The, the IRS would generally say in our comedic, humorous overview that they want to get as much tax revenue as they possibly can. If they think that certain taxpayers are less likely to be reporting their taxes appropriately, then they might make a requirement on someone else to withhold on their behalf. And so in general, the IRS would say that they understand that all these people who don't live in the United States and don't consider themselves U.S. taxpayers because they are not U.S. citizens, they don't live in the United States, they probably are not aware that they should or they possibly should be filing a U.S. tax return, right? And so the IRS has said, okay, okay, we have a solution for this. If they're working with a U.S. company or a U.S. person, then instead we will make a withholding requirement at the source of their income. Say, if you want to pay a non-U.S. person, you, U.S. person that we can go after and we know where you live and you're in the United States, you have this withholding requirement. And so the IRS would say foreign persons are generally subject to U.S. tax at a 30% rate on income they receive from U.S. sources. However, no withholding under, in the particular code section, is not important for this purpose, is required on income that is or is deemed to be effectively connected with the conduct of a trade or business in the United States and is includable in the beneficial owner's gross income for that tax. So let, let's, let's break that apart. What the IRS is essentially saying is that if a non-resident alien has U.S. source income, which again, that's one question that you have to figure out. You have to ask an accountant and figure out for your facts and circumstances if that is true. Then they're going to divide it generally into two buckets. One bucket is the type of bucket where, you know, we're not really sure if you're going to file a tax return on this. And so we're going to require that there is withholding on this income on your behalf. And if you fit into this other category, if this income is effectively connected with a U.S. trade or business, then we assume you're going to include this in your gross income and you're going to naturally file taxes on that, right? And so this general principle, there's basically two tax regimes that you'll see. And I don't want to get into the details of these acronyms and all what they mean, but we kind of put it in these two buckets. The first, that, that one bucket where they don't withhold effectively connected income, ECI, and the regime that where they, they do require someone to withhold they would call that fixed or determinable annual or periodic or FDAP, right? And so generally, generally, again, ask your accountant, if you have this U.S. source income, the IRS's perspective is going to be it's either ECI or it's FDAP, right? And if it is FDAP, then the IRS is going to say, okay, this is this income. We're not quite sure. We're, we're, we're less confident that the taxpayer is going to be doing the right thing with it from a U.S. perspective. And so instead, we're going to place a withholding requirement on someone else to say, before you pay this out to them, you need to collect some information from them. And if the information you know, says certain things, or if you're not sure about it, or you don't get the right information, then you have to take that 30%. That's the basic conflict here. For musicians, it, does their income actually fit into this withholdable category or does this fit into effectively connected income? And this is one, another question where you have to ask your accountant because it seems, and again, I don't know who 
DistroKid is working with, and I don't know who uh, any of the other music distributors are working with. But it seems that the different distributors are taking different positions on this, right? So as Dan points out, DistroKid seemingly didn't used to do this before. They've only started doing it recently, although from looking at Reddit threads, it seems like people have been complaining about this for a few years. And for sure, this split in the U.S. system between effectively connected income and FDAP has existed for quite some time. So it's not like, as far as I can tell, again, I am not a, a specialist in this area. As far as I can tell, there's not really anything new, at least on this front, that would trigger why things would change now. There is another type of withholding that I think has kind of kicked in recently, but that's for a different purpose than what we're talking about here. So another area where texts are complicated, if you haven't you know, been following along with all the other complications that we've talked about in this video, is precisely in this kind of classification scheme. Because if we say that musician's income is effectively connected income, then we would say, okay, the distributors don't have a responsibility to withhold. That does not mean necessarily that the musicians don't have an obligation to file and pay U.S. taxes, right? That just means that you're completely on your own and no one's going to do any withholding for you. And so if you're not doing that properly, you may get a surprise down the road. That's what that means, right? And you have to talk to your accountant to say, hey, do I really have U.S. source income? Uh, do I really have a U.S. tax liability? Do I have anything that I can do to reduce my income, right? You'd have to go through that analysis. And on the other hand, now certain distributors are making the position no, 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 we're not going to mess with that effectively connected I income stuff. We're just going to say you're in this other category, this FDAP category. And because of that, we're going to withhold. Because the way that the IRS does it is if the IRS thinks that a U U.S. company is distributing or paying non-resident aliens this other category, this FDAP, and the U.S. company has not done the withholding, then that U.S. company can then be on the hook. So from a perspective of if you're a U.S. company and you're paying these non-resident aliens, you're paying these international musicians, you have to make the judgment of, if I make the wrong judgment about whether this is effectively connected or whether this is this, this other category, then is that going to have an impact on our own liabilities with the U.S. government, with the IRS? And DistroKid has basically, it seems to me, taken the perspective, and I don't know who they've been talking to or how they came up to this answer, that for them to be safe with their company, they're going to take this as this FDAP category with this 30% withholding. Well, what are some things that you possibly could talk with your accountant about? You're going to want to talk with an accountant who has experience with people in your country who also have sales internationally and sales to the U.S., right? Because that's the sort of experience that your accountant would need to be aware of these different regimes and to be aware of these different concerns, right? So if you're just working with an accountant who's thinking that all of your sales are in your country and so they can only focus on your country's laws and your country's taxes, then that may be good for a point. But if you're making significant amounts of income from an international audience or from a U.S. audience in particular, then you may think about, what's the right time for me to kind of level up in terms of my accounting and tax advice? Even for me, like, you know, I am an accountant, but I would still need to talk with a colleague or talk with someone else about these sorts of issues because my specialization is not in this area. I can read up, but then I have to say, okay, I, now to answer these questions, I should talk with someone who has that experience of practically dealing with, okay, how does this actually work? What is the risk level? That sort of thing. Is there a right answer and is there a wrong answer? And that I think the answer in a lot of these tax situations is it depends. It really depends on the facts and circumstances. And it really depends on the types of arguments that you could make, which, again, this is not something that you necessarily want to make on your own. It's something that you don't want to make with the guidance of a tax accountant who's, who's well-versed in these areas. When I go through and look about effectively connected income versus this FDAP, this FDAP, then it really hinges on this idea of, does someone have an active trade or business that they are operating in the United States? And that sends us down an entirely different rabbit hole of questions. Because if a musician is not in the United States and they have no presence in the United States and their only business in the United States is being on a platform online at which U.S. listeners download and stream or buy their music, I have not read the court cases to decide whether that is enough to establish a U.S. trader business. 
And so remember, with the IRS, they're going to say it has to be one or the other. They're going to say it has to be effectively connected, in which case there's no withholding and you're on your own for it. Or go back to that other category in case there is withholding. And so from a perspective of the, the distributors, they may want to say, oh, you have your own U.S. trader business, so you're on the hook. You have to you know, work with your accountant to report your U.S. income taxes. But I think that many musicians would probably, I don't think that they're thinking of themselves as having a U.S. trader business whenever they are selling music to the U.S. If you're an international musician and you are not already filing U.S. taxes on the income from U.S. sources, are you aware that that may be something you should have been doing, right? That's the other question, right? I'm guessing that many international musicians, like in Dan's video, he doesn't describe about whether he is filing a U.S. tax return. He says at some point in his video, hey, I, I file my taxes to Brazil, so I'm already good. And my view would be, without knowing more, that answer is kind of worrisome. Just because you're filing your taxes in your own country doesn't mean that you're good with taxes everywhere. There can be an interplay of making sure that income is not double taxed. And so certain countries may say, well, if you've paid taxes here, then you can get a credit or you can get some sort of benefit that reduces your taxes there. But that, again, that's something that you would need to talk to your tax accountant about. And hopefully your tax accountant would be able to explain for that. So I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comments. I want to, I want to know, have any of you talked with your tax accountants who have explained these issues to you and kind of explained why it's one way or the other? Because what bothers me about this conversation is I, I know that the distributors don't necessarily want to provide the final answer on this. They're going to of course, say you need to talk to your accountant and they're not necessarily going to justify their reasons for why they're doing things a certain way. We kind of have to salute that behind the scenes. So I don't know who district kid talked to. I don't know who district kids consultant is who said, yay, this is, you know, you should treat your international audience's income as X. But based on this regime, it is a plausible way for them to go about this. And I don't know if the other distributors have made a conscious effort. They've, they've compared and weighed the two regimes and said, you know, we understand there's this other regime, but we're definitely going to go this other path because they don't, they don't go that into detail. And, and to be honest, they probably shouldn't like that, that that's something that really is for accountants to do. But I would be very interested in if anyone has had these conversations and, you know, has heard these acronyms, you know, ECI for effective connected income or, you know, FDAP fixed or determinable annual or periodic income and has had their accountant kind of walk them through about, you know, what is the level of their activity in the United States? You know, have you had to file U.S. tax returns? Have you ever filed a U.S. tax return about possibly getting a refund on this withholding? Because that's another thing you can do. If district kid is doing what they're saying they're doing, then they probably can't refund Dan's money because they don't have it. It's to the U.S. government. And for Dan to get it back, he has to presumably file a return with the IRS to try to say, no, 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 this is, this is really what my U.S. In source income was. And this is really what my tax liability is. And this is what you took out. And the difference is possibly refundable. That's something that, that he would have to ask an accountant and work with an accountant to do. But so far, I haven't heard that. I've heard people saying that they were robbed. I've heard people saying that district kid you know, steals their money, but I haven't heard this analysis on have people done this investigation about the interplay of their own taxes and uh, the U.S. taxes? Have they done this interplay about U.S. source income? Have they done this interplay about whether they have effectively connected income and therefore are handling their taxes in the U.S. on their own or, you know, whether they don't quite rise to that status. And so the IRS is thinking it actually should fall in this other category, which does unfortunately have a withholding requirement. And that's what I would like to hear. So definitely if your comments, uh, feel free to share this video. Um, and you know, if you're an accountant, if you're a tax accountant, you, you have more experience and there's something I missed or something I messed up, I would definitely love to, to know more. Um, because I, I, I just want, the the musicians in the online space especially independent musicians to be more informed i want to be more informed myself and as i mentioned before this is not my area of specialization so with that hope to to, to see your comments soon bye